All right, we should be live, and I have uh, Ian Johnson and Heather Rayner and Terry Spencer and Michael Besham on here. Oh, wow, look at that. I, I, at least on my side, I ended up in the middle. Cool. You never know where you're going to end up <laughs> in the, in the uh, placement here. But, yeah, hey, guys, uh, again, we're just um, – you know, going to focus mostly on Ian and uh, his book that he has out, but definitely have some other things to share with um, with Terry. He's got a, an online course going, and uh, Heather, you've got some events coming up, and um, mm-hmm. and we've got some events coming up here as well. And then, Michael, if you've got anything, we might as well just share it all right here today. But <laughs> um, shameless plugs. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Just keep them, keep them going. Um, I'm going to start sharing this uh, on uh, some other sites here, but uh, Heather, you want to go ahead and start us off? I know you had some questions for Ian. Yes. Yes. Hello, Ian. It's great to see you again. Hi, Heather. How are you and how is it in sunny New Zealand at the moment? Well, it was sunny up until about three minutes ago, but that's New Zealand. <laughs> Fantastic. Have you got any, any events coming up in, in the near future? Uh, no, I'm retired. Okay, except for <laughs> the conference you're going to be doing with us in July, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, stuff, there's stuff happening, but I, I mean, I can't remember what it is. That's just wonderful. So we're just thrilled to publish your book, What is Mankind? It's such um, a world-changing book. It's got amazing revelation and insight in it. And I would just love for you to, um, to talk about it for a minute. You, um, you mentioned a number of uh, very interesting points in there. Where would you like to start? <laughs> um, well, it's always difficult, that question. That's a difficult question because, I mean, the book came out of like three years just sitting in God allowing him to challenge me and to be challenged to um, have him just step all over me, basically. And um, and I think, you know, that's probably where the entire Ecclesia is at at the moment. The Lord just wants to really challenge our thinking and to bring us into, you know, a season of, of just walking as true sons. Um, the, the book is, a, is, is, of course, called What is, what is Mankind?, uh, that's, um, and then I think it's uh, got a subheading of, um, um, what is the subheading? <laughs> uh, um, oh, that, was, um, that um, and so, the, I mean, the premise of the, the start of the book, the introduction of the book is around Psalm 8. Yes. Which is um, just asking us, you know, what, what is man? What is mankind, actually? And, and then and then it takes it down to what is man and that's um, that's a cool thing because like it's a question we need to ask ourselves you know because most of most of man or mankind is still walking around in the understanding that we are slipping into heaven by the skin of our teeth sliding down the blackboard of life holding on for grim death when in actual fact you know we're, we're amazing beings created just a little lower than God himself Amen. And, yes. and God yeah. wants us to manifest that glory in the earth. Uh, that says, as it says in the scripture, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth yes. as the waters cover the sea. And that knowledge actually um, comes out of the sons. You know, like it's, that's our job is to actually release the knowledge of the glory of God. And so, if it's going to cover, awesome. if it's going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to start manifesting. Yes, the subtitle is A Journey Towards Discovering Who You Really Are. Yeah, yeah, that's great. um, uh, It's a good title. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and uh, you talk about the difference between spirit and soul in the book. Um, Mm -hmm. Can you enlarge on that for us? Um, Yeah, yeah. well, our spirit is uh, a fragment of who God is. Um, every human being, whether they're, whether they're saved or not, is carrying uh, a fragment of who God is. Um, and when your parents did what they did, um, and uh, there was a conception, at, that, at the point of conception, there's a flash of light, which is, like, which is the uncreated light of God. I mean, it's recorded on 
uh, I think BBC have got a secular uh, video. Um, it's called um, the, the Moment of Conception. And actually that shows you the flash of light. And, it, and it's, uh, it's beyond nuclear. It's, a, it's an amazing flash of light. And that's actually where the fragment of who God is the essence of who God is, which in the book I call, you know, and, and, and actually as, as a Jewish thinker, um, Torah is actually the essence of who God is. So, so every human being, whether they're saved or not, carries the essence of who God is in themselves. That's why everybody has a God conscience, you know, God particle. Um, and so that's the, that's the spirit. And then our soul if we're not saved, um, we're, we're carrying around uh, a two-part soul in a sense that there's an animalistic soul uh, from a Hebrew perspective. And, and, um, and then a soul, if we're born from above, that is born from above. And so the soul then becomes the coat uh, that, that carries our spirit into the, into the dimensions and the realms of the kingdom. So we, 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 I mean, non-Christians can travel around in the spirit uh, and, and they do so, but they're trapped in time and space. Uh, and um, this, um, I'm trying not to be too controversial, but um, I can't help it. Uh, uh, but but, um, but um, so as believers, we are carried inside of Christ because, um, you know, we carry this new soul. We're born from above. We are, uh, as the Aramaic says in John chapter 3, we return to our point of origin, and uh, I love that. I love that language. I love the I love the fact that it, you know talks about us returning. Where's our point of origin? It's in the heart of God. Uh, we were with Christ, crucified before the foundation of the world. So mm -hmm. so so yeah. my you know so you know I, I, that wasn't really an answer to your question, but found it alright anyway. That <laughs> no, was good. I I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. You had also mentioned, and we'll just touch on it because I think you kind of touched on a little bit about the um, the uh, um, the light that was given to the plants and animals. Obviously, was not you know when you look at the creation, the story of creation, it wasn't the sun light. So, I, say a little bit more on that. Um, I mean, well, from a Hebrew perspective, when God created, you know, like it, it, it obviously starts off in the beginning, in the beginning, God. And then, it, and then, the the if you pull the Hebrew apart, it actually says that God opened Himself like an envelope, and out of that envelope, you know, came Hashemiyam, which is the heavens, plural, uh, and so dimensions came out of God, and, and so then, and then it says God said, "Let there be light," and the Hebrew word is or in in a transliterated sense, um, or. Uh, uh, and that light is the uncreated light of God. So in the beginning, God said, let there be light and light came into the, you know, outside of himself for the, you know, for the first time, basically. And so that, that light is where God was operating out of then <clears throat> when he, as a Trinity started to uh, release creation. So, you know, then he created uh, the earth, which is at its, and it says he placed Eretz in the middle of the Hashemiyam, which is, so people are trying to get to heaven, but actually <clears throat> um, we're already in heaven uh, because the Eretz is actually placed right in the middle of the Hashemiyam, which is, which is the heavens. So both Eretz and Hashemiyam are dimensional words. So there are multi-dimensions within um, within. Um, Within, within the um, within the realms of creation, within the light. So all of that to say that when God said, let there be light, he then said on day three, he created the plants, the herbs, and the trees. Um, and we don't, we actually don't know how long day one to three is because there's no way of measuring time. Yeah. Uh, because, because day four, God said, um, you know, he spoke into being um, clocked timepieces and calendars, which is the sun, moon, and the stars, because he wanted to be able to measure, in 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 a sense, for for whatever you know, for his purposes, he wanted wanted us to measure the little piece of uh, thing that we call life. So, 
getting back to that. So the trees, the plants, the anim um, not the animals, the trees and the plants and the herbs were actually created before there were light. And so we've got a problem with modern day science because it says it needs that. And they say that trees and plants need uh, the sun to photosynthesize. Well, that actually isn't the case because because God created them before he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. So there's an eternal value, if you like, in the, in the plants. And that's why they... That's why we use plants for healing, uh, plant, plants, oils and things that come out of the plants because they, they have an eternal value. They come out of the light of God, the awe of God. So the ha awe, which is the created light, came on day four, but things that were created before that lived just entirely in the awe. Fast forward to Revelation uh, 21. Actually, the plan of God is to bring us back into the uncreated light of God. Um, and because it said that um, in that day there'll be no need for the sun and the moon and the stars because God himself will be the light. Amen. And Amen. So that's the restoration of all things. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Terry, I just want to go to you for a minute and see if you have any questions or, or comments on that because I know he mentioned some of the oils and I know you, you are into the oil frequencies and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, uh, I think it's really key that we come into alignment with what God is doing. And I think uh, mankind and our true identity is the hot subject uh, agenda of God right now to bring us back. We've been hundreds of years of not knowing who we are. We've been ineffective and we haven't changed anything much. We've had nice goosebump feelings and our comforts has been good but now we're in the greatest transition of all church history and i feel like everything i can do food diet exercise uh, you know essential oils and and some other things that 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 we can combine to come back into original design and intent or our first state some people call it uh is a benefit to us and it requires uh, some change. And, you know, I find that a lot of people are not willing to change today. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally love change, but then there's other things in, well, maybe a mindset, maybe the traditions of men that have made the power of God of no effect. Maybe some of those things are, are kind of hard for us to change because they're inbred into us for generation and generation. And so, uh, uh, my favorite scripture right now is, is, I can't remember exactly where it is, but search me, O God, know my heart, try me, see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And if you begin to pray that prayer, God's going to begin to reveal the things that are restrictions, limitations and bondages to keeping us that are, have kept us from entering into the place of who we are. I love the Mount of Transfiguration story how it, it, Jesus appears in his glorified being or our true identity. And he says, well, you're the, I'm the firstborn of many. And so as he is, so are we in this world. So here was the greatest people on the planet. His disciples at the time had a great idea, said, well, let's build three ta tabernacles, one for, for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And it's as if, uh, the Lord was saying, no, boys, you're not getting what I'm trying to show you here. I want you to build it on intimacy and a relationship with me. I don't want you to build your ministry or your life or whatever you're trying to do based on uh, a past who's who or a past move of God. I want you to build it on intimacy with me. And I think that's the number one key to bring us into position uh, 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 and authority and our identity of who we were really created to be. Uh, in this in this move of God that's here on the earth today, Amen, Amen. Uh, so, Heather, do you have something to add to that, or did I hear you? I say just think amen? that's wonderful. Amen. Yes, I completely <laughs> agree with that. It's just awesome to be working with you, Terry. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Love now, you Michael, I know that you got to leave at some point. Are you able to stay with us the whole time, or do you have to leave early? Oh, um, I have just about 15 minutes here. I just wanted to put, interject one thing, and, and yeah, I'm yeah, so honored to be able to meet Ian. Um, Heather, thank you for having me. I just wanted to say this. I've been talking to a lot of people that have been in kind of um, what they call satanic ritual abuse situations. Um, the, the one 
thing that stood out to me speaking privately to one of these victims that is getting healing was that she really didn't like the word ministry and wishing that there was more of that fellowship, closeness, loyalty. And that's really what I feel now is, is what lasts the longest, not like this hocus pocus, like magical prayer. And, you know, you one session with me and give me that money and you'll be great. Or even just read my book and you'll never have another problem. But for all, I mean, we should all have books. We should all have some sort of way to be supported and ministries in the sense of, you know, I really like Patreon. I think you guys should all have Patreons. Um, we should do everything we can, but yes. really the intimacy with God and the loyalty, friendship, being there for people, that has been the key for some of the most, you know, um, abused people in these, uh, you know, in the Pennsylvania, uh, you know, satanic cult things that, you know, a lot of garbage, a lot of non-heavenly garbage mess that we don't want to bring into this conversation. But, <laughs> yeah. but it's a new ministry. What you're doing is really, it's a new uh, form of reaching out just to your family and, and family of heaven, the courts of heaven. Just yes. love all of it. Yes. Amen. I'd like to, to maybe, if I may, I'd just like to agree with Michael on that. We have been having some really powerful heavenly court sessions where things have been washed off our, our DNA and going back generations and, and completely changed our experience of life. Amen. It is great being family in Christ. So Amen. Ian, um, with what Michael just talked about, uh, do you believe there's, that there's a, a part of your book that would be applicable to, um, you know, people dealing with this stuff? Uh, and, and what would you have to add in that area? Um, well, I, yeah, I don't have anything to add really, except to say that, um, I mean, I just say yes and amen to everything that's been said, because I mean, the whole premise of, of, of any teaching a book needs to be around the intimacy, intimacy with God. God is a Trinity. Yes. He, he, knows, he knows how to relate within himself. He knows how he knows, you know, he is love. Um, because he loves within himself. And actually, I think the premise of the book is actually to open up people's understanding of body, soul, and spirit so that, um, you know, like some groups concentrate on the spirit and they're ethereal and ooky spooky and other, mm -hmm. other groups uh, are concentrating on getting the body right. Some people are you know, giving the soul a hard time. Um, but actually, God wants us to be a unified being as he is and the only way we're going to do that is to actually understand who we are as a tripart being and then understand who he is as a tripart being and actually come into union and merger with that. So heaven and earth merges. And, and this is like, you know, I used to be in the corporate world and we, you know, we hated corporate mergers, but it was a fact of life. And God has actually got a corporate merger going on right now. Uh, and, and he's taken over um, and, and merging within his creation and his, his, and his creatures. Uh, so that so that we'll merge as one and we'll begin to resonate with a sound and a frequency that will actually bring like Michael talked about some of those people who my heart goes out to who, who are trapped in stuff that really the church has had no answer to so in quest, answer to your question does the book have um, answers um, I think the book's got answers for actually people who are trying to help people uh, hmm. who, who are trapped in yeah. situations like that because unless we truly understand who we are and actually eat from the right tree the tree of the you know um, tree of life rather than the tree of the knowledge of good and evil um, you know we have no answers for a lot of these things I mean in some ways the occult the you know the other spiritual things that are going on in the world that you know they understand the spiritual realm which is sad actually better than than a, than a lot of the ecclesia do and God's yeah. are actually really mm. wanting us to come back into this full understanding of who we are so that we can actually be effective in the, in the earth. So yes and amen. Man. Well, I want to go back to Michael one more time. Um, just because I know you're, you're going to be having to leave here shortly. Um, any other questions or, uh, comments that you'd like to ha uh, give to Ian right now <laughs> before you take off, Michael? Sure. Yeah. Um, what are some practical things that we can do to start engaging um, our higher heavenly selves and in the kingdom? Mm -hmm. And um, what, I mean, after 
you know, seeing uh, a lot of Ian Clayton's stuff work, the court system, and uh, mm -hmm. is there anything, I mean, essential oils, health, eating right, I just got a water filter, it's, you don't want to know what's in tap water around here, it's <laughs> get a distiller and you look at what's left over, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm probably going to like open my spiritual vision now that I don't drink this horrible stuff, <laughs> but um yeah. You know, by all means, like share with us uh, maybe some some steps people can take. Like, how can they start to uh, to step in? And um, I'm like looking forward to reading your book, sir. Yeah, I mean, I I, I mean, I I can, and um, my whole life is about teaching people to have. Everybody has a trigger, um, and 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 everybody's trigger is different. So, um, so you know, people can listen to my teaching or Ian Clayton's teaching and maybe 20% of the people that are listening can actually be triggered by those teachings to come into the, you know, into the fullness. But actually the, the key is to come into to that place of intimacy and union with Christ so that, so that we find the, our own triggers. And part one of the chapters of the, of the book that I've just written is, is a, um, a sort of skirts around the edges of God asking Job, you know, questions. And the reason God asked Job the questions and the questions that God asked Job may not trigger you or me, but, but the whole point of the questions was that, that um, Job would remember who he was. And, and, and so, you know, the way the conversation has gone today, I mean, that's pretty obvious that the Holy Spirit is, is saying, I'm just trying to get my kids to remember who they are. And, uh, and, and I could give you 10 steps um, but it wouldn't be fair because, like, um, you might click into it and, you know, Gil might click into it, but Terry might operate in a different way. And so there are principles for sure, and God operates through principles, but actually it's really about intimacy and finding what triggers your spirit, what triggers your soul, what triggers you into seeking greater intimacy. For me, because I'm basically lazy, lying on the floor and doing nothing actually triggers me. Um, but... but um, <laughs> but for some people it's like reading the word some people it's 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 like um you know like just what you know what some people it's wild worship some people it's soft worship you know so i can't really say there's one thing that triggers each individual because we're all wired differently we have to find what our <laughs> trigger is and then allow the holy spirit and then to sit in those questions that god will have for us and allow him to challenge our DNA, our thinking, our whole, uh, our whole. You know, I, I, I say to people that actually, the biggest enemy of the of, of the church is is not Satan. He he's just an angel with broken wings. Um, the biggest enemy of the church is that, is actually mindsets. And 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 I, and I I believe that um, you know. Uh, my role is to just challenge mindsets. It doesn't make you the most popular preacher in the world, but you know, that's, that's the, that's what you've got to do is challenge mindsets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Thank you for that. That's, that's awesome. And with that, I'm, I have to uh, clock out, but thank you guys so much for, for doing this and just really proud to, to be among such awesome saints of God in this time when this, these words are really needed. So looking forward to reading what is mankind. Thank you, Ian Johnson. Great Thanks. to meet you, Michael. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Bless you, Michael. Bless you, Terry. Bless you. We'll Bless catch you later. To all of you guys. We're going to get all of you on the Spirit Wars broadcast, Fringe Radio Network. There you love go. You Thank you. <laughs> right, love you, Michael. Bless Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So, um, Heather and Terry, uh, any anything come up, questions or comments as far as um, – for Ian and, and his book, I, I've got several here, but I'm, I want to make sure I make room for you guys. Yeah, well, I just want to say that, you know, I, I've known Ian for several years now, met him in Phoenix at Heaven's Place. And since then, we've uh, hosted him at Lake Tahoe for a conference with Grant and Sam Mahoney and uh, did some things there. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, like a month ago, we hosted a webinar with Ian and it's available on my YouTube uh, channel as well, Sam, uh, all about the same subject we're talking about. And, you know, I think that was a really great comment about uh, it's hard to individualize what we 
need to do as in a formula. You know, 15,000 yeah. people on my courtrooms at Heaven page, every day I get emails, how do I deal with this in the courts? And I won't tell them. I say, you need to know the Lord because the Lord is the way and the truth and the life. You need to know him so that you can come into knowing his way, not my way. My way may not work for your way. And so I think that's wonderful. And I think it's, it, it's individualized when we come into a personal, intimate relationship with him. So I honor you, Ian, for putting this book out there. It's such a key time for, for that. It's a strategic thing that God is releasing to the body of Christ. And, and I hope uh, you're a bestseller uh, <laughs> across all the media oh, platforms. Yeah, I agree with that. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I have your information in there again, Ian. Uh, so anybody who's watching this, um, definitely just go through the comments or the post above, depending on where, where you're looking at it from. If we don't have it in there right now, we will get it in after the broadcast. Um, and I may see if I can uh, put it in there in the comments right now as we're continuing here. But um, Thank uh, you, Gail. Go ahead. If I may. It's his amazing Gloria dot media. His amazing glory dot media. Here is the book, and being the publisher, I am the only person who currently has a copy. So um, it is fantastic. It's it's published by his amazing glory dot media. So please jump on that site and get your um, hardback uh, limited edition if yeah, you would I, like to. I we have a have Yes. Is that is that also available on Kindle? Because I've got all my library right here, you know. So it's <laughs> since I travel so much, I take my library with me everywhere I go. Is it going to be available on Kindle? It is going to be available on Amazon and on Kindle. At the moment, we have a limited gift edition in in hardback for anyone who would like to have one of those, and we have only printed a hundred copies of those. Um, so that's that's a very special and has. Um, a blessing message and in signature in it after we have um have offered those we uh, will be putting this on to amazon and kindle yes good good yeah i had a lot of people ask that last time um you know whether they could get it in a paperback or where else they could get it because like like terry i think a lot of people are are reading everything off of their kindle these days but glad to hear it's yes. going to be there as well cool absolutely well, um, you made a comment, I think, Ian, when we, you and I were talking privately at one point, um, that uh, your belief is that uh, time and space are a trap for the enemy. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, just, just that. I mean, I, I believe that um, that's what time and uh, space exists for, uh, because God needed somewhere to park the fallen angels. And, uh, and, and um, so, so as believers, we're, we're actually not trapped in that prison. Um, the enemy goes around, it says in the scripture, like a roaring lion. Um, and you have dollar shops, I think, in, in most of your countries. We, we call two dollar shops because we've got inflation here. Um, but um, but you, well, 99 cent stores in the States. But um, you can buy little plastic keys there. And, and Satan goes around with these little plastic keys pretending that he actually is the jailer. And mm. he's got everybody um, stuck in this prison when in actual fact, Jesus holds the keys. Um, you know, yeah. he, is, he is the key of David. And, and, and then he implants that key within us so we actually have the keys. So we are not trapped in time and space, even though the enemy has full, fooled most of humanity into believing that we're trapped in time and space. Where in actual fact, because of the blood of Jesus, as it says in the book of Hebrews, he came down through the cosmos, through the realms, and, and you know, did what he did on earth. And actually, it says he carried his blood back through the realms uh, and, and into, you know, in, into his father's uh, realm. And, and everywhere yes. the blood of Jesus is, or um, which is everywhere, mm -hmm. um, we have access to. So, so, so time and space i believe is simply a holding pen somewhere where the enemy can be trapped and actually our role is to actually discover that we're not trapped in that we we are not subject to the jailer 
uh, well, you know, he th he's actually a prisoner. He yeah. thinks he's the jailer. Uh, and, but he only has plastic keys. He can't open any doors. And, he, and um, um, we, we actually are the jailer. Um, we, we hold the keys because the key of David is inside of us. People are always looking to find out what the key of David is. They're setting up worship. They, oh, all that stuff's good. But actually, the key of David is the Messiah. Um, hmm. It's sure he is the key of David, and we have that key. We, you know, we carry that key. So, like, we've got to allow the Lord then to to operate us like a key, and and actually plug us into locks all over the place and twist us around so that we begin to open doors and realms for the rest of the ecclesia to actually be be able to. Um, access everything that God has for us because God's intention with Adam was, you know, go forth and multiply and have take dominion over the earth and uh, well, over the realms actually. And so, mm, I mean, nothing's, nothing's changed. God, God still wants us to have that um, dominion over, over everything um, because that's how the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. You know, that is interesting because uh, I came from a denomination I pastored in for seven years that basically taught that uh, Satan was trapped on this earth and that mm -hmm. this was the only place that he could exist. So um, am I correct in, in if I heard you right that you would you would say that he is confined to this universe, so to speak, or everything that we can see as far as time and space goes? That he's not necessarily trapped just on this planet, but yeah, absolutely. No, it's not on this planet. I mean, it's in time and space. So everything that's created, yeah, uh, um, that makes a lot more sense to me. You know, I mean, he can go to the edge of the universe, but um, but that's as far as he can go. He can't trans. He can't go transdimensional. Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> yes, we have been um, in in one ascension through Christ. We have been to the end horizon. Hmm. and um and and a scene where our past and and our future meet we'll have to talk about that sometime the event horizon because i've been there once as well and uh my my conclusion when i was finished is like in a good way it's just like this has no relevance for me because it was so far out there anyway it's, it'll be it's it's a good discussion but uh, not for now yeah <laughs> So, yes. Um, I'm looking through my notes here. Anything else, Ian, uh, you want to share from your book or Terry questions? Yeah, I do have a question, uh, Ian. Uh, I just started Enoch Flight School and yeah. it came out of several dreams uh, over the last few weeks and that I was teaching people how to fly. And, you know, I've had some incredible encounters, but, but, uh, you know, I don't really know. I'm just going to have to go out of intimacy with the Lord and let him show me and teach me. But I believe that Enoch, outside of Jesus, was one of the greatest manifestations of a fully mature son uh, and that's ever been. And if you look into the mystical third book of Enoch, you'll see what happened. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm sure some of you may have read that. And it's just fascinating how he took one man, ordinary man like you and I, and, yeah. and proved what could really be done to somebody who took this thing to heart and went all the way with it. So what, what, what's your thoughts on Enoch and what, what happened to him? Yeah, I mean, well, I believe that, um, um, like, if you look at the, I think it's, um, 37 or 38 uh, uh, of Enoch, uh, it talks about just exactly that. And Enoch actually got carried to the end of time where, where we begin to manifest as, as, um, as true sons of God. Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll never die. And, um, and I, um, I, I think that's a literal thing. Um, I'm not saying you won't necessarily die, but I'm saying you don't have to die. I also say that you need to actually decide to bring a few friends along with you. Otherwise, every 70 years, you've got to find new friends. Um, but, um, but, um, but, but Enoch saw that. It says in, in, in the end of the book of Enoch, Enoch saw the end. And he said to God, well, you know, this is the NIV, the new Ian version. He said, like, well, um, you know, I, I like that. I mean, I want to live there. This is like. God, when I see your 
plan for mankind. This is like, whoa. And God said, I do need a DNA marker at the end of the age. Um, you know, would you like to be that DNA marker? And so you know, became a was not hmm. because God took him out of the dimension that he was living in and actually took him. Enoch still lives in the same realm that we live in. He just lives at the end of the age. And, and so he, he discovered, you know, what, what the final end of man was and he stepped into his future. And, and that's why he became a was not. And actually the whole plan of God um, is not some bus stop rapture. It's sorry if that offends somebody, um, but, it, but it's actually, uh, it's, it's actually for us to be taken into the end of the age in the place where we don't die, uh, where, where, where he actually manifests fully as God in us. And we, we become so united with God. So, so yeah, that, uh, that, that, you know, we manifest like God, not, we won't be God, but we'll manifest like God. And, um, and so, you know, flight school is a good idea because God's plan is to actually have us all begin to actually be where Enoch is currently as a DNA marker. Yeah. You said something Ian very key to one of my encounters, uh, was that, uh, one of the first ones, the Lord took me to a place called the space of unknowing. Mm -hmm. And I began to look that up and I found a unknown mystic who wrote the cloud of unknowing. And yeah. that was yeah. more about contra contemplative prayer. But to me, that place where I was, was, was in the cosmos. It was ordinary. It wasn't, a, mm -hmm. you know, like the eye of God constellation. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anything beautiful. It was just space. And I was the only one there. And it's like, ah, oh, it was so important to me. I think this is practical for all of us that we have to literally begin to unknow everything we've known in the past and all uh, the traditions that made the power of God no effect. We've got to yeah. let go of those yeah. and, and come to the place where uh, we're able to sit at his feet and learn from him and, and just just – release everything release who we are uh, i i mean last few years of my life uh has been total abandonment as surrender yielding and uh, i think another one of the most important scriptures of today is those who struggle to save their life will lose it and those who lose it for my sake will find it well most everybody right now is struggling to save their life save me oh god like moses you know, at the Red Sea, all of a sudden, you know, he didn't know who he was until God said, we pick up your rod, your authority, your identity, you part the waters. And so yeah. God, I think, is wanting to take us there to, to unknow everything to know. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I like that. That is good. I, I've actually written a blog on that, that I really don't want to know anything anymore because once I say I know it, then I've closed the subject matter and no one can teach me anything. So yes. I want to remain teachable. I want to keep learning. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, Ian, you got anything else you want to share at the moment? Um, otherwise I'm going to have Heather share a little bit on some of the things she's got coming up as well as your conference. And in... I just want to confirm what Terry said. Um, you know, I did a, I looked into, you know, Moses there for a while and, um, you know, the, the 10 plagues of, of, of Egypt are a great demonstration of, of, of sonship because the, there's, there's, it starts off with God doing stuff and then actually Moses ends up actually being the, the one who instigates things like God said, Moses, stretch forth your hand so that darkness covers the, you know, covers the, covers the earth. Uh, and, and so uh, a darkness that can be felt, well, that was Moses' Moses instigating that because God's God started the plagues, but then Moses he, he actually brought Moses into the picture as a son, and they cooperated as co-creators. That's good, um, and that's that's actually you know if, if Paul says that Moses is a fading glory. Mm. That's right. So wow. that, yeah, like in the time of Moses, um, we're, we're just um, we're just chicken farmers. <laughs> <laughs> all right well um so heather um you've got some some information for us right 
Yes, um, we have an event coming up at the end of March, we're really excited about. Um, and, and we are actually um, running that with Gil and Adina. And that's in Sacramento, in yeah. California. And we are hosting Nancy Cohen and also two very special speakers on Hebrew culture, language and spirituality and mysticism um, called Yana Sanders and Dala Fields. They are going to be coming and, and sharing some very precious uh, insights from uh, Hebrew uh, belief as well. And our emphasis is on, on being family in Christ from all different uh, creeds and cultures, uh, being one in Christ in family. And so we would be really excited if anyone would um, like to come to that. Um, we do have a, um, a ticket tailor site where um, tickets can be bought for that. And I just put that on the links there, Heather. So it's, it is below us on the links. Thank you. And that's the, the last weekend in March to come and be family in Christ with us and hear Nancy Cohen, who, who will be taking us up uh, into heavenly realms very gently with her, um, her passion and, and years of experience. And Yana and Dala, who, who will be sharing on a Hebrew mysticism and, and spirituality. And then in July, we are hosting Nancy Cohen again with Ian Johnson. And that's going to be in Greenville, South Carolina. We will be putting more details up for that. And in November, we are very excited to be um, having an event in Moravian Falls with um, Nancy Cohen again, and also with a couple of other special speakers too. So, so we have some excellent things happening for um, everyone who would like to come and be a family in Christ with us. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'll get the picture over on, on the comments as well a little bit later. So Ian's going to be Thank part you. of all that. And then um, uh, Terry, if you want to put your link to your classes again in the comments below, that would be awesome. And go ahead and tell us a little bit about that again. When that's all right. We're, we're actually doing the first ever online intensive for the courtrooms of heaven. We're uh, let's see this Saturday. We're doing a uh, uh, two to four. 2 to 6, 5 p.m., or four, 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, online and on my Facebook page, there's registration for that. Uh, in which time I, zone, Terry? Central. Yeah, okay. I'm in Nashville. And on uh, December, let's see, uh, 8th, I guess, we're having uh, Timothy Bentz. No, this is on the 13th. I'm sorry. I can't keep up with dates. <laughs> Vince is going to be with us on their next installment for Enoch Flight School. So we want to get the people like Ian and Timothy and, and people that are really out there on the edge. I don't mind offending a few people. You know, I think <laughs> every move of God comes with package with the fence. So I'm not too afraid to do that. Jesus wasn't either. So we're going to do that. Absolutely. And so, uh, we were looking to do some things with, uh, oh, uh, April 20th with Karina Pataki and Timothy Bentz going to be up at Cane Ridge, Kentucky, uh, for, uh, uh, the Cane Ridge third grade awakening event. And what we're going to do there is come in from a government of the kingdom of heaven perspective and legally open the gates for the third grade awakening. We started there at, uh, at uh, Red River Meeting House. We already did a meeting there with Karina Pataki. And then uh, April 20, which is Passover. I'm really excited about this one because what it looks like is, I, I love what David Herzog used to do when I was up in Sedona with him. He would have his meetings on a Hebraic uh, uh, festival, feast, high yeah. feast, uh, like Passover, Pentecost. And then he would hold... Uh, is key gatherings a, on a geographical open portal. So it had a double open portal. I said, well, let's, let's do that and see what happens. So we're meeting on Passover, Saturday, April 20, in a, in a geographical open portal, Cane Ridge, where the Second Great Awakening started in 1800. So I am really excited about that. Timothy and Karina, 
if you guys haven't heard those guys, they're just amazing. I love Karina, and we're going to do some more meetings with her here. We've done uh, uh, two with her uh, up, to, uh, up to this time, and so we're looking forward to do, do more. But I'm really beefing up the online thing because you can reach people all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. Think- you can offend people all over the world. <laughs> well, <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> thank you, Terry. Um, and then a lot of the stuff that we're doing at Kingdom Equipping Center uh, involves Heather, and we're hoping that it might work out. We just had Terry here. You you were here in uh, um, October. Appreciate that very much. We loved it. Loved what you shared. Loved you. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully maybe, Ian, you can uh, be able to stop by when you're in the States in July. Um, but, yeah, we have um, – uh, Chris Carter, February 15, 16, and 17. So um, if you haven't seen him before, he's a, just a gentle character that just uh, has some very interesting uh, ways of teaching things that people just seem to, to love. And, and it uh, really helps us um, move along when people aren't dogmatic about things and they're just sharing. We're all on this journey together. I love that type of attitude. And, and that's that's the people we usually have coming to Kingdom Equipping Center. So we just uh, love and appreciate that. So uh, anything else? Um, yeah, I'll just, I would mention a, a New Zealand event um, in um, the 30th, um, I think it's the weekend of the 26th. 20, uh, uh, it's the Auckland anniversary weekend anyway, I can't remember. And it's at a, a friend of mine has just taken over what was a new age center. Wow. And, and we're redeeming it. Um, awesome. And the, the center is called Waiara, which means a bursting forth of the of waters, or more specifically, um, a, a bursting forth of the of the waters of birth. You know, birth waters. And, and it's right on the Waikato <laughs> River. Um, we've got a, a group of um, New Zealanders coming to that, and it, again, it's a time of intimacy and worship. And we're just we're just believing that we're going to begin to re- redeem some of the realms of the spirit that the enemy has been trespassing in um, because they are ours to have and not theirs. Um, so they're just going to have to sit down somewhere and twiddle their thumbs because we're taking it back. And, and uh, so Waiara uh, at the end of January um, uh, for New Zealanders, and we had some Australians there last time that came over that got really inspired by the fact that we were doing something like that. So um, that's something for Americans and, and um, British people are invited to, of course. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Great. You know, and I will say that, uh, you know, Yahweh's doing something pretty special at our, at our Kingdom Equipping Center uh, Sunday night meetings that we have. Uh, he's just brought in a level of worship um, that has just really um, just taken us so deep with the Father. So anyway, we're live each Sunday night. If we're, you know, we're trying to be consistent on YouTube uh, to be live there. And you can actually get that through our website, KingdomEquippingCenter.com. Um, but if we're not there by any chance, like this weekend, we're actually in a different location and there's no internet and there's no Wi-Fi of any sort. Uh, so we we're we're going to be, uh, just going on Facebook and going live on, on a phone. But, um, we did that before and it's just the, the power of the worship that uh, Yahweh's given to us has just been tremendous. It's been deep. It's been based on frequencies um, and so we've had a trumpet player that it's just come in. It's just, anyway, it's just been one of those things where you get so knocked out drunk in the spirit, not craziness really, but just, you don't want to come back. <laughs> so anyway, just invite anybody that wants to join us there. That would be awesome. Anything else? No, that's oh, it for me. Well, I so appreciate all of you, and I love what Michael said when he jumped on. He says, oh, look, the Avengers. <laughs> um, he's, he's such a, such a great guy, and uh, if anybody is curious what he does, he's um, a host, a regular host on the Fringe Network, Fringe Radio Network, and um, he also has a, a Spirit Wars is his Patreon account, so if you want to check that out, you can go there. He's got a lot of very interesting things and a good solid Christian doing a lot of battle against the enemy and the spirit. And um, I just really appreciate him as well. So wonderful. Thank you, Gil. All right. Well, we love you guys. We love you. you. Bless you. you. Look forward to seeing you and talking to you later. Bless you. Bye, Bye, Heather. Bye, Terry. See you again. All right. right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sounds like the Waltons, doesn't it?
Yes. <laughs> Good night. Turn Good night. the light out. <laughs> okay.